the El Husseini Grand Mosque in Amman, Jordan. During the month of Ramadan, thousands gather to pray here. Seven out of every ten are Palestinian Arabs, and they live in Jordan. Less than an hour's drive from Amman is the Israeli-administered west bank of the River Jordan. There live more than a million Palestinian Arabs who carry Jordanian passports and whose links with Jordan are strong and unbroken. Even the PLO cannot conceive the existence of a Palestinian people without Jordan. The Allenby Bridge is the main crossing point from one bank of the River Jordan to the other. Transports loaded with goods regularly cross here, and thousands travel to and fro every day. To visit family or to conduct business on regular shuttle services in and out of Jordan. Jordan, to visit my uncle. I'm going to Amman. I'm going to visit my friends. I come for a visit to Jordan. Elias Frege, the mayor of Bethlehem, explained to us the links between the West Bank and Jordan. They are very strong, they are very cordial. And there is great respect for Jordan in the West Bank. Why? Well, uh, Jordan is, has nearly 70% of its population Palestinian Arabs. Jordan is our gate to the Arab world and to the Muslim world. And Jordan to me is one lung. The West Bank is another lung. And the Jordan River is the artery that joins the two lungs in one body. Jordan and Israel are technically at war. Yet for the local Arabs, the border is open. And hundreds of thousands have crossed Allenby Bridge from Jordan to the West Bank and from the West Bank into Jordan and on to the entire Arab world. In this way, thousands have been able to make the journey to Mecca in Saudi Arabia fulfilling the religious precept of pilgrimage. In order to more fully understand the importance and significance of Jordan for the Arabs of the area, one has to reach back several decades in history. This is Palestine, an area under British mandate since the end of the First World War. And it is within this area, as agreed by the League of Nations, that the Jewish national home is destined to be recreated. Two years later, Britain partitions Palestine into two separate parts. Three quarters of Palestine becomes Transjordan. With the establishment of Israel in 1948, war breaks out. The ceasefire of 1949 leaves Jordan in control of both banks of the Jordan River. Palestinian representatives to the Jericho Conference of the same year accept Abdullah as their king, and all the people of the area become Jordanian citizens. Hassan Darwish of the West Bank, a former member of parliament in Jordan, recalls the period. Amman is the capital of the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan. After the unification of both banks, it became one state, after the Jericho Conference. And our relations with the Jordanians were of the very best. There were many intermarriages. Men from the West Bank married women from the East Bank and vice versa. Half the parliament was Palestinian, half the Senate Palestinian, and a great number of department heads in government were Palestinian. And in the West Bank there were Jordanians. 
There was no discrimination whatsoever, and nobody sensed that people were from different places. And these relations continued until 1967. Since the June War of 1967, Israel has been administering the West Bank. But Jordan, with its large Palestinian population, continues to play a significant role in the day-to-day -day affairs of the area. One of Jordan's chief functions for the West Bank is to provide a marketplace. Agriculture is a way of life here and a great part of the crops grown locally will find their way across the river to Jordan. At packing stations like this one in Hebron, the produce is graded, crated, and loaded onto trucks for shipment. These fruits and vegetables will be sold later on today in the stores and markets of Jordan. But it's not just fruits and vegetables. There are also building materials, quarry stones, olive wood, and other products of which Jordan is the natural recipient. In local schools on the West Bank, youngsters study a mainly Jordanian curriculum. Afterwards, they will be able to enter a Jordanian university, or any university in the Arab world. The education budget, health and welfare services are subsidized by Jordan through its continued financial aid to the municipalities of the region. Every year, King Hussein opens the new session of Parliament in Jordan. He claims the Palestinian cause as his cause, even though the Palestinians have never had a say in the future of the Hashemite monarchy. Nevertheless, the Palestinians dominate the economic life of the country, controlling some 70% of Jordan's economy. They are prominent in the media, in academic life, and in the liberal professions. They are active in politics and have constituted more than half of Jordan's governmental leaders since 1950. The future of the Palestinian Arabs is uncertain. What clearly emerges is that the East Bank will play a major role in that future. <laughs> We here cannot give up Jordan. Jordan is a brother Arab nation bordering us. It is the gateway to all the Arab countries. At the present time, more than half the population of Jordan is of us, Palestinians. It is possible that more than three quarters of the property in Amman is owned by us, Palestinians. And if a Palestinian is a property owner in Amman, or, let us say, the property is in Amman and its owner lives in Bethlehem, that means we cannot give up Jordan in any way or form. At the Allenby Bridge, people wait to cross the river into Jordan. They will cross into a country where Palestinian Arabs constitute a majority. Into a country which is located on more than three quarters of what was Palestine. Into a country which is Palestine today. Into Jordan. Jordan. 